Hello and welcome to the gun shop. Today we're here reviewing this. This is a Browning X-Bolt. The particular model we're going to be reviewing today, although it's going to be more of a generic Browning X-Bolt review than just this model, this is a stainless stalker. Uh, isn't it nice? Fluted as well. Rather delightful. Uh, it's working from the back. We have an inflex pad. Same pads they put on their shotguns in terms of recoil reduction, so it is quite nice. Personally, I prefer a firm pad on the back of a rifle just because it sort of just helps me engage with the gun a little bit better. However, it will take a bit of a kick out if you're not going to moderate it. You have the Dura Touch stock. These are actually really very, very nice. These are actually really nice. This soft touch finish is um, very rubbery and delightful. I have had a couple that scratch, so they will scratch if you beat them up too hard, but the same can be said for any synthetic based finish. The grips on it are stippled and you've got a right handed palm swell, so actually it fits the hand really nice. The trigger's a bit far back from my hands, but that's quite often in the case with a sort of American brand rifles is the grips are just a little bit small for my, my liking. Forward you have a single stage trigger, slide style top strap safety, nice and simple. Comes with two piece bases, weaver, weavers, uh, you have a bolt. Three lug bolt, which is fairly delightful as it goes. Uh, stainless action, stainless barrel, fluted, lightweight, very, very nice rifle actually in the handling. You have a nice thin grip, comes with two stainless steel studs as well. And that's a magazine, isn't that nice? So, Basic description over, uh, let's actually look into opinion based description. Uh, recoil pad is actually quite nice, it does fit in the shoulder quite nicely. The stock's a little short but that's just personal preference and the scope mounts are actually quite far forward so it does balance out alright. I like the safety, it's a, just a nice familiar thing for all the shotgun boys, uh, it's quite alright. You've got a cocking indicator on the bolt, that's alright but it does sort of, wear, when anything is painted red it's always going to wear out I suppose. That's not the end of the world, everything is replaceable and fixable. The bases, I like the bases, four screw bases, they, they work, they're actually one of the only rifles I've never seen come loose. Bolt throw, nice, good, very similar sort of quality in terms of slickness to a Tika. Like with all things, it doesn't actually matter that much about slickness because when you pull the tr once you pull the trigger, it's nice and quick. You don't worry too much about the wobbling and the rattling. To remove the bolt, you've got a little catch on the side there, bolt up, push it forward ever so slightly, push that in, the bolt comes out the back. As you can see you've got a short series extractor there, three lug bolt, all very, very pleasant actually. A little plastic runner there as well. What is a nice feature of this, so we flick it onto safe, it's cocked, this button comes up. It's got a locking bolt, but you can unlock it. Press this button in here, the bolt comes up and back, and you can put it down again, all without it being dangerous, which is good. So, press the button, bolt up and back, if you want to unload all that sort of thing. However, moving on to the magazine, you've got a little magazine release catch there. This is plastic, and it's quite short, but you have quite a nice cutout, so it's quite easy to get to. Actually attached to the magazine there, so it's not going to keep sticking out. It's not going to wear out, that sort of thing. Actually, not a bad idea. Plastic magazines, you either like them or you don't. Personally, plastic mags, in my opinion, are a little bit better uh, because they don't bend, they don't break, but when they do break, they're dead, if you know what I mean. So they will flex and expand. And modern plastics are very, very good. Two screws there that pull the action into the stock. And this mag is actually a sort of rotary style mag if you like. Not bad, not my cup of tea, I prefer, I like traditional stuff, it works for a reason. However, again, these mags aren't bad, you end up with quite high capacity for a very low profile. That's important. Taking a step back, the trigger, single stage browning trigger. Um, I hate them, I really hate them. This is their new <laughs> feather trigger, this is the best trigger I've ever felt on a browning to be fair. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. However, there's no through travel. A single stage trigger is all right, don't get me wrong. However, I would like to have some pull afterwards. I find these, they're very short trigger pulls, very light, excuse me for dry firing it. Very, very pleasant to pull, but really just isn't my cup of tea. I like a two stage trigger, or I just like a trigger with a bit of travel after it breaks. It makes me feel like I've released it. Um, 
but that just comes down to what you use, what your preference is and that sort of thing. Uh, the stainless barrel, absolutely wonderful finish on there, they don't rot, they don't rust, very very good and the fluting just is a nice feature, it takes a bit of weight out, adds to cooling but more importantly takes a bit of weight out which is good. They have an inset crown on these models on a 14x1 thread, so they take most standard moderators in a 14x1. They have an inset crown, saves it from getting damaged, can save it from any rust that will come off your mod, stop where the binding actually happens and will hopefully last a little bit longer. However, if you clean your rifle, it's sort of unnecessary. And to look at, the finish isn't immensely superb, but it's certainly good enough. Certainly good enough, and that's all that really matters as long as it works. With a rifle of this price bracket, they're not looking to provide you with a masterpiece of engineering. They're providing you with good quality, everyday working tool that uh, will make you happy. For me, what sells this particular model is the, just the fact that it's so streamlined. The forearm's tiny, everything is nice, it's shallow, it's compact be kind of a shame to ruin it with a massive scope, but it's inevitably what's going to go on there. Good rifles. Uh, I'd say Browning's are good rifles. My personal preference of the price bracket would be something like a Tika. And I'd say even the new Sauer 100 series is, is in a similar affordability bracket. Uh, these guys are actually made in Japan for an American-ish rifle in the Maruku factory. Very good standard of engineering, don't get me wrong, however built to a budget, and there is certain areas where you can see that. You might be able to tell, I'm not the world's biggest fan of this rifle. However, as a rifle for doing a job, it is absolutely fantastic. You couldn't ask for more than what it does. However, personal preference would say, I dislike the branding triggers. However, it is the nicer one I've ever felt. I love the safety catch. I like the fact that it's got a little button on top of the bolt. It's not a three-stage safety, but you've still got an option to open the bolt on safe. I like the bases. I love the finish. But for me, it is ruined by the, the, the trigger, but that, that's just personal preference, like I say. Beautiful rifle, really good. Uh, this one's in 243, so it's the short, the short action version. Definitely worth a try. However, there's, it's now a sort of flooded market at that area, so it very much depends on your personal preference.